came up against your health. The enemy came up against your finances. The enemy came up against your vision. The enemy came up against your business. You will. because I am giving them a question of the day. They are detailing the What keeps entrepreneurs from connecting and collaborating um, is trust. If you've never keeps entrepreneurs from connecting and collaborating um, is trust. If you've never collaborated and saw the benefits of collaboration, then you don't know that you need to. If there is individuals who have strengths that you don't have um, and you complement each other, you have those thought par partners, those accountability partners that you really can work with well together, the outcome is just amazing. I have been in five collaboration books. Um, one of the benefits for me is the time piece because when you're writing your own book, it does take time. Then secondly, you are opened up to so many more people than you would ever do by yourself. Just the benefit of expanding your reach and your circle is a, uh, also a benefit in collaboration. I really feel that every entrepreneur needs a book because it helps validate what you're doing. Um, you do the work, um, you are out there making money off of what you're doing. I like to know what it is that you're doing as an entrepreneur. Tell us your story. Everyone has a story, um, which is why I highlight entrepreneurs in the Grind Entrepreneur Network because I am giving them a question of the day they are detailing their questions and their responses, and you're getting to know who that entrepreneur is. And so with a book, 
you're able to do that. Your audience, your clients, your customers, they're able to see who you are as a person and not just as that CEO or that boss that you are of your business. The mission of the Grind Entrepreneur Network is really quite simple. Um, it is to support, connect, develop, and highlight entrepreneurs. The network is just amazing. And so I'm really so glad for that because when I need services done, I go to my network to see who I can invest in. You know, I really want to do something to help support and highlight entrepreneurs who are on their grind. And, and that's really how the Grind Entrepreneur Network was born. So Perfect Time SHP, that is really a passion. Um, that is a coaching and consulting firm, and I um, really just focus on leadership development. Um, I look at uh, those career professionals, um, as well as entrepreneurs. If you are in need of a leadership development coach, um, if you just need some steps, some guidance, some how-tos on getting your uh, entrepreneur journey started, um, if you want to up-level your career, um, certainly reach out to me. Um, also, if you're an entrepreneur and you want to connect with others um, that are all across the United States and beyond, and also be highlighted and featured in our Grind Entrepreneur Network Spotlight each month, Definitely reach out to I'm Sharon H. Porter.com and I would love to connect and collaborate with you so that we can definitely support your efforts and make sure that you get the results that you want in your business. Happy amazing Sunday to everyone. I am Dr. Sharon, educator, author, entrepreneur, and speaker. I am so excited to be with you today. Before we get started, I have to give a shout out to our sponsors, James of Dale Custom Clothier, where you will find extravagant fabrics, custom tailoring, all at affordable price, and also Cloud Workspace in Capitol Heights, Maryland, where you will have a collaborative workspace and event space for all your needs. And you can find them at GetCloutCO on Instagram and Facebook. So we have a wonderful, wonderful treat for you today. As you know, the I Am Dr. Sharon show is all about highlighting awesome educators, fabulous entrepreneurs, and dynamic authors. And today, we have all three for you today in this hour. So I'm going to start out with my first guest. He is none other than Dr. Mark King. He has over 20 years in public education. He has served as a middle and high school principal. He's also served as an instructional superintendent, deputy chief of operations and programs. He is an adjunct prof professor at Bowie State University, and also he conducts professional development in Baltimore City Schools. Yeah. Yes, and so I would like to welcome Dr. Mark King. Welcome, Dr. King. Well, thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Be here. I am so excited that you're here. It's been a long time since I've actually seen you with my <laughs> eyes. <laughs> we worked together for many years, right. um, many right. years ago, and so it's really fantastic that you're here today. Yeah, it's, a it's a pleasure to be here. Then, um, like I said, it's, it's been a long journey, but don't go too far. Then. We know we're not 25 anymore. <laughs> That's but so true. But it has true. been a journey, and it's had been very enjoyable, very enjoyable. Awesome, awesome. And I just really want to start because you are doing phenomenal things um, since we first worked together um, as a principal. You've gone on to do great things. And so I really want you to talk a little bit about that transition from building principal to all of these fabulous roles that you have over the years. Um, well, actually, it all starts with building relationships. You cannot be successful in this business if you don't build relationships. The relationships between leaders, relationships that leaders establish with principals, relationships with students. So I've been blessed to work with some fabulous educators, including yourself. I have had wonderful assistant principals, wonderful teachers, who all made decisions with children in mind. And I think that's always what's, the more, what's most important. Absolutely. And you really have a passion for student success. Um, you have really proven that your leadership moves the needle. Um, I've seen it in action um, in middle school, in high school. Um, you moved over to a whole nother district and still did dynamic things. What do you think is the key to really moving and pushing student achievement? I think the key is, as I said, it's the relationship piece. 
because as a principal, assistant principal, deputy chief, instructional superintendent, it was always about building relationships to improve student achievement because until students know and understand that you care, you're really fighting a losing battle. So once you build relationships with students and you have conversations with them, they tend to understand that it's about more than just academic success, but it's about success in life as a, as a whole. Absolutely. And one of the things that you talk about is removing barriers, um, really closing that achievement gap. We know, um, especially here in our area, in the Washington, D.C. area, um, there are, you can find many different, you can find the uh, poverty-stricken neighborhoods. You can find well, high affluent neighborhoods. And so in order to move that achievement gap and remove those barriers, what do you think it will take as educators? I think it's critical for us to focus on the early childhood learning piece because we spend a lot of time trying to remediate students who are behind instead of trying to accelerate them in their earlier years. So once you do that, you can also look at the, the, the ethical piece and the equity piece. Mm -hmm. Because what I'm noticing, because I've always worked in urban education, is it's not equitable across the board. So when it's not equitable, you have haves and you have have-nots, and that's where you see gaps in education as far as student achievement is concerned. So we have to address the equity and the equity issue, as well as the social emotional piece, because children today come to, come to school with a lot of other things that we didn't come to school with. Right. And until you address those things, your homework really was not important to me, because you don't know what happened in my house last night and what yes. goes on in my life on a daily basis. So until you address the social emotional needs of children, you won't have student achievement. Oh, wow. You're absolutely correct. And speaking of urban schools, you just graduated from the Superintendent's Academy. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Congratulations Thank for you. that. Thank you. Talk Thank to you. us a little bit about that journey. Um, it was a wonderful experience through Howard University and the American Association of School Administrators. We had the opportunity to speak to and have conversations with sitting superintendents, retired superintendents. Um, Dr. Murphy over yes. in Virginia, he's one of my personal mentors. I talk to him on a regular basis. But the journey was incredible because there's so many things behind the scenes that you don't understand. It's like I tell people all the time, it's easy to be the principal if you don't have to do that job. Right. So from the outside <laughs> yes. looking in, it's easy to be the superintendent because all you have to do, well, we're just going to focus on student achievement. But no, it's not quite that easy. Not that easy. You've got to focus on the budget piece. You've got the political piece. You've got the school board. You've got the parents. So there are a lot of different moving pieces that I was exposed to that I really did not have a clue. But once you get exposed to them, then you can develop how you want to address those issues. That is awesome. And you know, as a leader in education, one of the key tenets of a effective leadership is cultivating leadership in others. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit because in my space I work with novice leaders, new principals, new assistant principals. Mm -hmm. What do you think um, is the first most challenging aspect for a new leader going into a building? I think the biggest barrier new leaders face is time management because once you become the principal, you have a tendency to want to do everything. everything. So if you don't manage your time appropriately, you won't focus on what needs to be done. And you do a lot of different things, but you don't do any of them well. Exactly. So I think the time management piece is critical. And then behind the, behind the time management piece, as I said, is building the relationships, supporting teachers, supporting students. But you also have to be equitable across the board because when it's wrong, it's wrong. So you had to be honest enough to have that conversation with people because I'm not doing you a favor by telling you you're doing a good job when you're not. Yes, I love it, I tell you. And so another major component in schools is culture and climate. Um, we know that it's imperative that we establish a culture for learning, a culture for teaching. Um, what tips or what suggestions do you have for new leaders going into buildings where there is already an established culture that maybe needs to be shifted? Well, you have to identify the barriers to what you want to do. So there may be pockets of culture and climate in different buildings that are not what you want them to be. So you had to set high expectations and hold everybody to those expectations. Because if you have one teacher doing A and one teacher doing B, it's not consistent across the board. And students will pick up on that because they can do this in one class, they can do this and this something else in another class. So you have to build consistency and you do that with high expectations and you hold everybody to those expectations. Now, the d most difficult part is the modeling piece because you have to model the expectations that you expect everybody to have. If you're not modeling what you expect, you're modeling something entirely different. Absolutely. Absolutely. I tell you, it, <laughs> you are just, you know, your experience has taught you a lot. Oh, yeah. 
Um, and so you started out as a middle school principal, right. you transitioned to high school principal, mm -hmm. and now you're actually working in an elementary setting or working with elementary schools. Let me know that whole span of K-12 experience. Talk to me about that. Well, when you're looking at K-12, that's when I really started to look at the early childhood piece because I've always been a data-driven person. So I'm looking at the data points from pre-K, kindergarten, and first grade, and you see consistently across all urban areas, students are achieving. But between second, third, and fourth grade is when you see students start to decline. Mm -hmm. And once they start to decline, it's very hard to bring them back. And the decline goes straight through middle school. So I tell people all the time, nobody fails ninth grade in ninth grade, you fail ninth grade in sixth grade. Absolutely. You don't fail sixth grade in, in sixth grade, you fail sixth grade in third grade. Because you don't have the, the academic tools that you need to be successful. So it's all a matter of back mapping as well as having conversations not only across grade levels but across schools. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm an elementary principal and I'm sending you students, we need to have a conversation about the students that I'm sending you. Absolutely. Because everybody is not a number. There's some background information about why these grades were attained, why attendance is this way. And I don't want you as a principal receiving my students to wait until November to understand, oh, this is why Mark King does A, B, and C. Exactly. So those conversations need to happen in the summertime so where you can already be prepared that when Mark King gets there, you can know how to address his specific needs and you can differentiate based on the conversation that we have over the summer. Absolutely. So that K-12 piece is the vertical articulation piece. It is. Children don't drop out of, out of their freshman year in college in freshman year. That may be when you drop out, but you don't have the skill set necessary to be successful. Nobody goes to school every day to fail. Right. Children, adults, nobody does. So if they come in every day, there has to be something that we can do to make them successful. Absolutely. And we were both middle school principals. And we know that the middle school child is a, <laughs> that is a time that is so critical. Mm -hmm. And it really takes a special person to be and service those middle school students. Right. Talk to me a little bit about your experience because it is a challenging time for that group of students. The middle years, I spent 16 years in middle school as a teacher, assistant principal, principal. The middle school years were the most fun to me yes. because that's the only place you can go and a child is 12 years old one day and they're 21 the next <laughs> yes. day. So, but it's, but it's differentiated for each child because the biggest piece that I learned in middle school was never embarrass the child. Yes. That is, that is really important. So if something is wrong, the child has done something, we can go in my office, we can talk about it behind the closed door because I'm not going to yell at you in front of your peers and then you won't take it to the next level and next thing you know, I'm a middle school student arguing with a middle school student. <laughs> right. So what I really learned was just listen because there's a reason why that child did A, B, and C. Wow. But if you don't listen, you will never get to the root of the problem. You just want to address that situation. Yes. But the situation has a root cause. And until you get to the root cause, those situations tend to, tend to continue to happen because nobody's ever addressed the social emotional mm -hmm. piece about the, the, what this child is dealing with. And I mean hormones and girls, boys, boys cell everything. phones, yes. text <laughs> messages. My son just started sixth grade. I'm scared to death. <laughs> Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But it's, but it's the listening piece because that's because they they want somebody to actually listen. Yes. Because in elementary school, everybody tells them what to do. So now you get to middle school and you have an opinion, <laughs> and somebody just needs to listen to the opinion and then explain to you like we don't do that out here. Right. <laughs> I understand, but we don't do that. Out right. Here. Absolutely. So what's next for Dr. Mark King? Um. Well, actually, my wife will have to tell me. <laughs> Because I've never taken a job or applied for a job without my wife's permission because the work that we do affects everybody in the family. Yes. And so you, if you don't have that buy-in from your family, yes. you really can't be successful at this because you're torn. So my wife hasn't told me what I'm going to do next. I'm perfectly honest with you. So All right, Shauna, go yeah, ahead now. Yeah, I'll have that conversation with her. If something comes up and she'll say yes or no, and then that's what we'll do. That's awesome. I love everybody else's kids, but I love mine. Too. That's absolutely, absolutely. I tell you, and so do you have a professional following on social media? Um, I do. Um, KingMark01 is my Twitter handle. Okay. So you can follow me there. Um, I'm also on Facebook. Okay. But my wife that runs Facebook, okay. so I don't even know what the handle is. <laughs> I'm sure she'll tell me after this show, don't ever go on TV and say that you don't know. That is so but she funny. didn't give me notes. So. Okay, <laughs> that's okay. But I'm de if you look up Mark King, I'm sure you will find him. Dr. King, this has been a pleasure. I'm just always just so just 
elated to have your experience, your knowledge. You drop so many good nuggets, and I just appreciate you always. Oh, well, thank you. And I, any, anytime you, you need me, I'm available. So All right. It's been a pleasure to get back together. Okay, a little yes. bit. Yes. I'm glad you're doing well. Yes. Shout out to Region 4. Okay. <laughs> Those were good days. Those were good days, <laughs> yes. absolutely. So, guys, this has been my interview with Dr. Mark King. I tell you, just a wonderful, wonderful educator, and I look forward to following and seeing what happens and what he's up to next. So please stay tuned. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back. Okay, I just heard that we have a telephone call. Yes, you're on the air. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with our guest, Miss Monique Ross. for coming back with us. We are here with my next guest, Miss Monique Williams Ross. Monique is a fashion designer. She is a stylist. She uh, created her own fashion line, Elon Artistry, and she is the owner of the Savvy Fashionista. She is a graduate of Norfolk State. Right. Woo. <laughs> okay, yep. and so I would like to welcome to the show 
Miss Monique Williams Ross. How are you? Hi, I'm very passionate and very happy <laughs> yes, to be here. Yes, absolutely. About spring 2018. Absolutely. And so, guys, it's a little chilly right now, but you know what? In just a few weeks, it's going to be spring. <laughs> and yes, she is here to talk to us about some spring fashions and all that we have to look for for this season. But before we get started, Monique, tell us how you got started in fashion. Well, I had a very fashionable background because my mother and my grandmother were kind of like style horses. They like, my grandmother, she dressed a lot. She wore gloves and hats a lot. And then my mother, I watched her um, put on makeup and I liked the way she laid our clothes out for school. She coordinated really well. And even in sixth grade, I got best dressed <laughs> because oh. of my mother. Wow. <laughs> um, so. All of my life, I've been into fashion. I looked at the albums in my house, um, always looked at magazines, always be, wanted to be the person behind the scenes. Um, I wanted to think about, like, how did they put that outfit together? Who picked the hair? Who picked the clothes? Mm -hmm. Who put that look together? I'd be in albums, just album stores, looking at the albums, just flipping for hours. Wow. And it's like, OK, um, maybe this is something I want to do because I can't get away from it. So, and then dressing for me is like fun. It's like an expression that tells a story. How am I feeling today? This is what I'm gonna wear because this is how I'm feeling. So it's never been um, play by the rules. Okay. Because to, to me, fashion, the rules change every day. Okay. So um, I really think fashion tells a story and I like telling that story. Okay. And I experimented with different looks. Um, I used to work downtown in DC when I first moved to the DMV and I wore business suits a lot. So I got a lot of compliments on my outfits. How how do you put that together? I mean, people would come up to me on the train and say, hey, um, where'd you get that? Or, you know, how'd you put that together? And I said, wow, you know, I'm getting a lot of compliments here. Um, I wonder if I could literally make some money. Wow. You know? So were you working um, full time at that time? I was. Like uh, a corporate, I, a nine to five? Yes, I had okay. a nine to five. <laughs> Um, I was doing like an admin job downtown, but I just, we had to dress up back then. You know, back then you had to wear suits and skirts and heels and, and I just had fun with it. So it's always been a part of who I was okay. um, or who I am okay. now. Um, but it, to me, fashion is effortless. It's, it's a no brainer because to me, it's how you feel. Mm. So how you feel yeah. is what, is what, I what you see that. on the outside. So. Um, on any given day, you you know you might not know <laughs> right. what I'll look like, but I always had the passion for making other people feel the same way, mm -hmm. to feel good and be free to express the way they like to dress and bring out the inner confidence. Because when I style people um, for fashion shows or even personally for an event, I love to see their personality just perk up. Yes, and it just wakes up something in them and they leave different than they came. Absolutely. And that's what inspires me. So the Savvy Fashionista, mm -hmm. when did you create it and when? Um, actually, maybe a year ago. Okay. So I'm just getting started that's with that. That's awesome. I'm finding myself having to reinvent myself and I've done that through um, owning an online boutique, um, just trying to do something a little different. Um, that is something near and dear to my heart because I feel like I love, it's so much fashion out mm -hmm. here, but I like to pull pieces that I think works for a savvy, mm -hmm. chic, grown and sexy woman. Okay. So that's what my my boutique caters okay. to. And you have a lot of um, vintage pieces as well. You like a vintage I like fine. pulling vintage pieces here and there. Okay. And um, even in my personal collection, my vintage pieces speak the most. People go, oh, where'd you get that? And I know everybody doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. So I love vintage shopping too. Yes. Um, so that's, um, actually this piece is vintage. Okay. <laughs> yes. On this, um, yes. and, um, so it's, um, a very, um, boutique for a woman that's professional, but she likes to be stylish and yes. she's chic with it, um, sexy at the same time. Okay. And so mm -hmm. you have just some pictures of some styles that mm -hmm. you would like to share. So talk us oh, through yes. what you have. Okay. So jumping into spring 2018. <laughs> One thing that we did last year was we saw pink everywhere. Pink, pink, pink. Everybody had pink in all the stores. Pink was the, the color for the year. This year's a subtle transition to lavender. Mm. And here's a piece that 
Um, it's from my boutique. It's a lavender velvet dress, but you're going to see a lot of lavender in different fabrics. That's the, that's the thing. It'll be in sequins, velvet, um, materials that you don't expect um, uh, as to be normal, like um, beaded things, um, beadware. Lots of jewelry will be in lavender, lavender accents. Um, there's also um, a lot of lavender and purple together. You'll see colors in the same family. So you wear lavender with purple, you might wear it with um, pink also. So it's like taking that muted color or that pastel and merging it with another color in the same family. Okay, let's see if we have a, a call for you. Okay, sure. Yes, you're on the air. You have a question for Miss Monique? Okay, maybe they're just calling in to listen. <laughs> People do that a lot. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, another thing we're going to see a lot of is large florals. Um, their florals are showing up on everything from sweatpants to dresses. Really? Um, you know, and the florals this time, don't think about granny, um, just floral, feminine. This year, florals are sexy. You're going to see floral dresses with high splits. You're going to see them with deep plunge necklines. So you're going to be feminine, floral, and dainty, but sexy and edgy. <laughs> so okay. it's definitely um, a time to wear maybe like a, a floral sundress with like maybe some chic boots, some lace-up boots mm -hmm. um, this spring, uh, maybe some peak toe boots. So a lot of flowers are going to be showing up on things. But the thing about it, that I really like um, about florals this year is that they're strategic in making your silhouette fit you. Like you'll see them spread out in the right areas <laughs> where you, it'll, it'll um, accent your figure. It'll flatter your figure better. Okay. So look for that um, as you're shopping for florals. Another thing that we love this year is fuchsia. This jumpsuit is on my website. It's a detachable cape. That's cute. And fuchsia is the color of the spring and summer. I like that. Um, it's just a boldness to it. So you're going to see that everywhere. So give them your website while you're talking in case they want to go My website <laughs> is thesavvyfashionista.com. Okay. Um, you can see all of these styles on there. And is that, does that come in other colors or just This fuchsia? comes in a bunch of colors. This okay. comes in dark green, yellow, red. I like um, The cape is detachable. Oh, it's okay. a very fly, funky mm -hmm. piece. It's a statement piece. And I tend to like statement pieces and jumpsuits okay. a lot because it's a no-brainer. Yes. You throw on a jumpsuit, yes. you're one and done. <laughs> exactly. So that's, yeah. that's I, like um, that. I call my uh, jumpsuit section Jumpsuit Central because okay. I have a ton of jumpsuits. Yeah. And I have a lot in my personal collection. Another thing you're going to see a lot of is parkas, parka jackets, mm -hmm. or utility jackets. They're like sporty drawstring jackets. Remember the 90s when they had the drawstring mm -hmm. jackets and the parkas? Well, this year, they're going to be worn as part of your outfit. So you're going to wear your parka not as a jacket you just throw on on the way out the door. Mm -hmm. You're going to put it on with a coordinating boot. Maybe it matches your skirt is a part of your outfit. Okay. It's not just a jacket. Mm -hmm. So you're going to make it kind of fly it up a little bit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or if you want to be casual, you can wear a matching sneaker mm -hmm. or a coordinated sneaker. So um, the parka is going to be really, really heavy this spring and perfect for the, the season. Mm -hmm. Also, the thing about making America great again. <laughs> Let's make it great by Americana. Americana style is when you wear a lot of stripes. You're going to see red, white, and blue a lot. And um, it'll be in fringe, it'll be in everything. Scarves, necklaces, um, red, white, and blue is just the thing for mm -hmm. the spring. So talk mm -hmm. to me about when someone comes to you and they, they need to be styled. Mm -hmm. How do you um, really find the perfect pieces for them? Is it just from their vision, them telling you what they like, or do you just sum up by your experience? What do you do? Well, I ask them things about their personality that they're comfortable with. It's really 
fashion is is deeper than what's on the outside. It's really about what's on the inside, bringing that out. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do is find out people's personalities and what they're comfortable in. And then if they're not comfortable, I might give them a little twist to make them, mm -hmm. you know, just take them over the edge just a little bit out of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they find like, wow, I didn't know I could wear this, right. you know, and, and kind of break that barrier. But it's all about a person's personality and mm -hmm. bringing that out to the utmost. So what about body types? The different body types, mm -hmm. um, individuals come to you with certain body types. Um, there are certain things that may uh, look better. Or mm -hmm. So how do you handle if a certain body type um, is asking for something that you don't necessarily think or do you just allow that expression of that individual? Well, I'll say this, body types and trends, every body type is not made for every trend. So if you have a specific body type, you cannot wear a trend just because that trend is out. Mm -hmm. um, do what works for you and your, your shape and your style because it can go all the way wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, because some of the stuff that comes out now, I mean, if you're a heavier person, you tend to need heavier fabrics for coverage mm -hmm. and just to look decent. Um, you don't want to wear the thin, really, um, some of the materials are really cheesy. And then if you don't wear it over something else, it kind of eh, it doesn't look too chic as far as fashionable, um, you know, fashion is concerned. It's not too fashionable to wear certain things. So I always say, don't follow trends. Follow what works for you mm -hmm. um, and your body type. Mm -hmm. You'll come out better in the end. And you can incorporate a trendy piece with mm -hmm. whatever you you know you wear. But definitely look at your body type. Uh, look at certain areas that affect your shape the most. What stands out the most? If you have thick thighs, you know you want to work with pieces that are a little bit longer to give you a more elongated um, sh shape and silhouette. You have to focus on the entire look. Don't just focus on, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I have boobs, so I'm going to show all the cleavage I can today because this is what I'm working with. Mm -hmm. You got to kind of add some some pieces that work with your your body type. Okay, awesome. So mm -hmm. where can people contact you should they want? Um, you've, you've given your website for the pieces, but mm -hmm. what if they desire your service? Do you still style? I do. Okay. Um, and do you are you still designing or are you doing more styling? I'm doing more styling because I'm focusing on my online boutique right Got now it. and I'm loving the fashions that I'm able to just pull instead okay. of having to design and everything. Okay. Designing <laughs> is something I do kind of like on my own time. Gotcha. But um, the styling piece, you can reach me um, via email at the Savvy Fashionista number one at gmail.com or you can go to my website and um, hit me up there. Okay. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram okay. as the Savvy Fashionista. Okay, awesome. So, mm -hmm. And in addition to all of that, you are one of the contributing authors and women who lead that will be out in about two weeks. Yes. Um, so <laughs> just tell us before we go mm -hmm. just a little bit about mm -hmm. your title, your title, your chapter title, and just mm -hmm. a little bit because you really speak to your fashion um, in yes. that chapter. Yes. Um, well, my story is called the, Gr the Grind, the Grit, and the Glam. And it's in that order. <laughs> it's talking about the grind behind the scenes, things that you encounter that's not so glam. Um, everybody sees the outside and they think fashion is so glamorous, but it's not. <laughs> it's, it's glamorous up to the last second <laughs> until that model runs out there mm -hmm. on the runway and for a few seconds that they snap that photo. Everything else is grit. Mm -hmm. You have to work. You're putting on sneakers. Your hair's all over your hair. You're picking up clothes. You're finding this and that, you're bending down, picking up shoes, you're sweating. So, and then you also have some crazy things that you run into in the industry. Um, you know, people don't want to pay you or they lose stuff, they steal stuff. Um, you're, they take credit for your work, you don't get the credit. Wow. So it's a lot of things that I talk about wow. in my chapter that wow. that's happened to me wow. <laughs> and some other people yes. that I know. So um, I kind of enjoy telling that story. Yes, because, absolutely. Um, so I can't wait for that. the release. Mm -hmm. And you actually style photo shoots. Um, I think yes. you have one coming up. I do have one exactly. coming up. Exactly. So yes. how can what, individuals just email you if they need you to style for their photo shoot? Yes, that definitely work? email me um, and put your project ideas out there if you want to hire me as a photo assistant or stylist for a fashion shoot i'd love to hear from you so okay awesome mm -hmm. thank you so much guys spring fashions <laughs> is coming it doesn't feel like it today <laughs> <laughs> but it is coming, so get your spring gear in order. And we will be right back with my next guest, Miss Aisha. Hey. 
She is the fabulous Aisha Hugh. Let me tell you, she is a licensed master cosmetologist, an award-winning certified makeup artist in the Washington, D.C. area, and she launched the Amped Hair Makeup LLC back in 2015. Aisha, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I just gave a little bit about you, but please tell us a little more about Miss Aisha Hugh. So uh, I am a Southern girl. Um, I'm from Alabama and um, came here to the area uh, with my husband who's military and um, I just, I'm a, I'm a graduate of Auburn University. Okay. Go on. And um, <laughs> I just love how um, all of this has come together. I love makeup. I love fashion. I just love the beauty industry in general. So, um, yeah, glad to be here. Absolutely. And, and I must say your makeup is all of Thank that. You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Definitely. you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's talk about Amped. Okay. Um, you started that almost three years ago. Uh -huh. And what has what has it done for you? Oh, it's, it's truly been a blessing, um, honestly, from God. I started out working at MAC. I did that for okay. a little while. Um, I've always known that I wanted to be in the beauty industry myself um, because my family, my mother, uh, growing up in the South, when you go to church, it's like a big fashion yes. show. <laughs> and every other week, my mom would take us to the hair salon. Like my sister and I would be in tow every other week. So I would just sit there and I would just watch all the ladies get their hair done and the transformations being made and the confidence. And I was just like, oh my God, I just have to have that. And then Sunday morning, just, you know, getting up, looking at that, I was just like, oh my Lord, I have to do that yes. too. So a few years ago when I was working at MAC, I absolutely loved what I was doing. I absolutely loved doing hair as well, but makeup just really became mm. like a strong, strong passion for me. And I just decided to step out on faith and just go for it and wow. do it myself. And it's just really been a blessing. God has really opened a lot of doors. A lot of opportunities have started coming my way. You know, it, it can be a challenge at times. Times, obviously when you are alone trying to build but you know with the support of your family and your friends um, it's just been a blessing so I've been out here doing it wow. I'm trying to do classes oh, trying yes. to get out there and just market myself and this wonderful opportunity yes. as well. so thank you absolutely and a shout out to Dr. Teasdale for yes. connecting shout us out to Dr. <laughs> thank, thank you, you. Thank absolutely you. Yes. and so I really because make I'm fascinated with makeup okay. because I can't do it okay. right <laughs> That's why. So those of us who are not, mm -hmm. you know, struggle mm -hmm. with the whole makeup thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what tips do you have for your everyday person that want to, you know, get up in the morning and have a, a beat face? Okay. What, what do you suggest? So first of all, I just want every woman to stop thinking that they have to follow all of these rules that social media puts out mm -hmm. saying that you have to do makeup like this. You have to do makeup like that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there are rules that, that you want to follow, but 
you have to stay true to who you are. Makeup is not a replacement. It's just an enhancement. So for the everyday woman, I would say make sure you're cleansing your face every day. That's one thing women, when they come to me, they always ask, how do I get flawless skin? Well, what are you doing underneath that skin, mm. first of all? So you gotta make sure that you are cleansing your face. Then you gotta make sure you're moisturizing your face. And then you also have to make sure that you are putting a little sunscreen on because we need sunscreen mm. as well. But just for the everyday woman, what is it that you like? If you're that lady that just likes a little bit of lip gloss and a little bit of, uh, of, of mascara, then do that. Mm. That works for you. If you're that lady who likes to get out and beat your face every day, so that means you might want to put a little bit of powder on, you might want to put a little bit of blush on, you might want to put a heavier lipstick on mm -hmm. just to kind of give yourself a little bit of a pop, then do that as well. So for the everyday woman, I think that you have to find what works for you. I do teach classes. Okay. So if you want to come and get that one-on-one -on -one and, apps and, and learn exactly what to do, we can do that. But I just think that you have to find what works for what you're doing in your profession. You have to, if you want to get out and just go to Walmart and you just want to, because I do that sometimes, <laughs> okay. I just like to put my little lip gloss mm -hmm. on and then do that as well. So wow. you just, it's just important to find out what you like and be true to wow. what, who you are. So talk about your classes. Okay. So um, you do one-on-one -on -one classes I do one and group classes. classes. I so do. tell us about that. So, <laughs> so my makeup one-on-one -on -one classes are great. So you come out and depending on, if we're doing a group class, I pretty much kind of uh, make that specific. So that might be just learning how to do just like a glow or uh, every day go to work. So that might include three shadows, a lipstick, a blush. And then I might teach you how to transition from day to night. Now my one on one, my private classes, that's customized completely to what you want to learn. So if you want to get your girlfriends together or if it's wow. just you, I customize. So you say, hey, Aisha, I want to learn how to do a smoky eye. Then that's what we're going to learn how to do. If you say, hey, Aisha, I want to learn how to highlight and contour my face, then that's what I'm wow. going to teach you how to do. So when you come to me and you tell me what it is that you want, I customize each and every class for what it is that you desire to wow. look like. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and so you are a mobile artist. I am mobile. So you come to where the work I is. I come to where the work <laughs> is. So wherever you need me to be, Aisha can be wow. there. <laughs> wow. And so what's your, um, your standing appointment time as far as how soon in advance does someone need to contact you? So 24 hours is good for me. Um, I do have a family, obviously. Mm -hmm. So if I have something going on, you know, and I can't get to you, you know, I can communicate that with you. Right. But as long as you let me know within 24 hours, if it's, if there's something that you need or need me to be um, there for you, I can be there. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I tell you. And so going back to uh, your classes, uh -huh. um, have you done events as far as your your makeup with your glasses. So so I have done um, a few events in the past, and actually I have an event coming up now. Um, we I'm working with a, a group of individuals. We're doing a wedding panel that we have coming up. That's on April 15th. A friend of mine, um, Damon Decker, uh, with D3D Photography, mm -hmm. um, and a few other people. Um, we are getting together for people who are newly engaged and want to learn how the wedding process works. We have a group of people that's coming together, the stationary, event planning, and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I'll be one of the makeup artists there to talk about bridal makeup. I also have an upcoming class, uh, makeup one-on-one -on -one class, where I'm going to be teaching what the newest trends are, uh, what you should be wearing in the summertime, how to treat your skin, and things like oh, that. Wow. Um, in the past, I've done like um, an event for breast cancer awareness, um, a lash out event. That was a free event where um, if you are a survivor of cancer or just a friend of somebody, you could come out, I would do free lashes for you and things wow. like that. So um, those are just a couple of things that wow. I have going on. Oh yeah. my God. So where can people <laughs> contact you? <laughs> so you can contact me um, at um, AMPD, A-M-P-D, hair and, A-N-D, makeup, um, at gmail.com. You can also find me on Facebook at the same name, AMPD, hair and makeup, L-L-C, and I'm on Instagram at AMPD, fly wife though uh, so you <laughs> can find it. me um on those i uh, love it oh my goodness yes. i tell you I, if you need a makeup artist definitely reach out to aisha <laughs> yes. 
I don't know if y'all can see her like I can see her, but the makeup is on point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. And so it has been such a pleasure. And thank I you. appreciate this connection because I thank see great you. things thank for you. us. Yes, we have that connection. <laughs> great yes, things for us thank um, you. collaborating. Thank so, you. Thank you. I'm and excited. Exactly. And she's a Delta. Yes, okay. I am. So, Shout you know. out to Loudoun <laughs> County Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> so you got to love her. Yes. Oh, my goodness. So I thank you so thank you. much, Aisha. Thanks and I look forward to our work Thank together. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And guys, we will be right back. We're going to take a quick break with our final guest. Oh, yes, Miss Naturalista. I tell you, I cannot wait for her. So we will be right back. Yeah, when you will be. Yeah, when the enemy came up against your health. came up against your finances. The enemy came up against your vision. The enemy came up against your business. You will for coming back with us. I am here with my final guest for today, Miss Fola Shayo. She is a natural hairstyle beautician. She's an artist, she's a poet, she's an author, and the CEO of Afro T Cultures. I hope I said that right. <laughs> <laughs> but welcome, welcome. Thank you can you. correct me. Thank oh, you so awesome. Much. So those were just little things about you. Please take the time to tell everyone who you are in the right pronunciation. <laughs> sure, sure. Good morning, everyone. My name is Miss Fola Shayo. I am a native of Prince George's County, Maryland, and I am of Nigerian heritage. And I am a naturalista. I am very <laughs> a diehard fan of natural hair. And I'm a poet. I've been writing since the age of nine, and I use my words to inspire people to 
action and to be their best selves. Yeah, and that really led you to your first book. Yes. Oh yes, my God, it did. 21 Affirmations for the Naturalista. Am I, I saying that right? The yes, Naturalista. Yes, yes, the natural indeed. sister, the basically, is what yes, it is. Pretty much. Right, exactly. Yes. And so we're going to really talk about this very awesome just affirmations that you can use um for the day and she's putting it there thank you so much and so let's talk about this first how did this start for you well one day i was blogging and i was thinking about an a, an audio to create to inspire women when they're on their way to work and i just thought about it let me come up with you know a few affirmations for just to encourage my sisters with natural hair every day and before i knew it i made the cover of the podcast and I was like, this looks really neat. It was on Canva and it looked like a book cover mm -hmm. and it actually was a book cover template. And I was, I just told myself, I should make this into a book. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it took on a life of its own. Awesome. And so the natural hair, and we know, and, and uh, we have several people in the show today that are mm -hmm. our hairstylists. Right. And so you specifically work with natural hair. Yes. And so we have seen a shift in the last few years mm -hmm. of people letting go of the chemicals right. um, and going natural. Right. Talk to us a little bit about your work with that. Okay, well, my work with that is really, really helping people who are transitioning a lot. And they always ask me for a lot of tips. Should, what should I do? Should I use this? Does this work? Does that work? And honestly, it's a process. It's a lot of trial and error. What might work for this person might not work for that person. Some person, somebody might need something heavy. Somebody might need something light. Your hair might be thick. Mm -hmm. The other person's hair might be fine. And it's more so a quest of finding what works for me what looks good on me and what works well for me. That's what I try to help mm -hmm. people with. And so I do know that there's a difference in natural and chemical free because at, at least that's what I hear. Because if you blow, blow your hair straight, is that still considered natural? As long as you don't put any chemicals, I would say like a texturizer or a perm, you're definitely still natural. Okay. So how long have you been doing this? Because your hair is full, it is thick, and it is beautiful. <laughs> so tell us about your much. process. Well, my process, I've been natural for pretty much my whole life. I'm 27 and a half, thank you, Lord. She said and a half. <laughs> thank she you, Lord. She said and a half. <laughs> I um, love it. Um, I've had a, some chemicals in my hair. Um, we call them touch-ups. I've had some touch-ups. I've had... A, I think my mom put a texturizer in my hair when I was younger. I had a perm when I was in college. I don't know what happened to me. I was supposed to get braids, then I just jumped on the train and got went to Regis Hair Salon in Hyattsville, checked them out, they're pretty good, and I, I got a perm. I don't know what overcame me. I just got tired of my hair, and I just said, I want something different today. And I was a freshman in college at Morgan State University. Check out Morgan too. And <laughs> I just decided to try something different, but what I didn't know was that my hair wasn't going to stay like that. It's mm. something I had to keep on. I had to keep on getting, and I just went. I went natural after that, and then I went and put another texturizer in my hair. And then after, since 2010, I left my hair alone. Wow. So you've been without chemicals since 2010 for eight years. Pretty much. Okay. Yes. Awesome. And so talk a little bit about the the care of natural hair because that's my struggle. You know, it's mm -hmm. brittle. It's hard. You know. Mm -hmm. So the things that you have to do to really care for natural hair. Okay, for natural hair, what's really critical is moisture, mm -hmm. having a good moisturizing regimen and deep conditioning every wash day, you know, and just knowing how often to wash your hair. Generally, every month, everybody should get a deep cleanse every month, and maybe like in between, you can do like a co-wash, but mainly the two most critical things are deep conditioning moisture and the last piece is protective styling. Mm -hmm. Try as much as possible to wear a low manipulative protective style. Okay. And so in addition to your natural hair um, services, you also are an artist. Yes, I am. So talk to us about your art. Okay. Art comes from the heart and pretty much uh, I've, I've always had a, a, a knack for just creating and making things and I took an art class in high school and one of the things we did was paper mache and I just thought about a great way to inspire other people and it just it just came from within mm -hmm. and it just turned into affirmation cards and what you do right this right here is a package of affirmation cards and I made this out of newspaper and you see the wonderful 
gloss paper that's on top and paint. And you take a car and you just take one. And you take the card inside and you write down what you like about your hair. Mm -hmm. Then you take the other one and you give it to your friend. My friend is Dr. Sharon. <laughs> And I tell Dr. Sharon <laughs> to open it and write down what she likes about her hair. Oh, okay. And that's a form of inspiration. It's okay. kind of like pay it forward, mm -hmm. but pay it forward for natural hair. It's like okay. the gift that keeps on giving. Okay. Take one, pass it along. Okay. Pass the awesome. baton. Encourage awesome. yourself. Encourage somebody else. Exactly. And so what would your suggestion be for those who are trying to transition? They have chemicals in their hair now, but they are thinking about going chemical free. What are your suggestions? My suggestion for transitioning is low manipulative protective mm -hmm. styling. What, a, what most people do is they, uh, wear, they cornrow their hair and wear a wig on top. And another thing you can do is just do some twists and have a lot of fun with roller sets. I did that. I would get, I would twist my hair up and then I would foam it, mm -hmm. or sometimes I would it and I would put rollers in. And because it's still chemically processed, you know, you get that drop, mm -hmm. that, that hang time, you know? <laughs> yes. And just, just try low manipulative protective styling. And, you know, just trim off, just slowly be trimming off the hair. You don't have to big chop immediately. But by the time your new growth comes in, let's say you're transitioning for a year, our hair grows six inches every, every year. And, you know, by the end of the year, you might be, you might not want a big chop, but you might be able to cut off a third or a quarter of your hair. So mm -hmm. just slowly... Uh, ease your way into Okay, it. awesome. So where can everyone connect with you and follow you? You can find me on all social media websites, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Miss Fola Shire. That is M-S-F-O-L-A-S-A-Y-O. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And guys, we have had, again, my fulfilled thrust of educators, authors, and entrepreneurs today uh, on the show. And again, Ms. Paula Shade's book is 21 Affirmations for the Naturalista. Um, definitely check her out. Um, I want to thank all of my guests, Dr. Mark E. King, uh, Ms. Monique Williams-Ross, and Ms. Aisha Pugh. I thank each of you for being a guest, and I thank you, my audience, for tuning in live and those of you who will catch the replay. I thank you as always, and always thank you to our wonderful engineer, Mr. Ron Jackson, for being on point for us every Sunday. This is Dr. Sharon, educator, author, entrepreneur, and speaker, reminding you, the bigger the dream, the harder the grind. Could preach, pray, and continue to grind. He came up against your health. The enemy came up against your finances. The enemy came up against your vision. The enemy came up against your business. You will.